untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Unfortunately, this will be our last 100 card Brawl deck for the time being, but as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a blue-green Kazmina Planeswalker deck built around the Enigma Sage. 3 mana for a 2 loyalty Planeswalker says each author Planeswalker we control has the loyalty abilities of Kazmina and the plus 2 lets us scry 1, so that's a great way to increase a lot of loyalty on our various Planeswalkers because the goal of the deck is to use Kazmina's minus 8 ability. We also have a minus X ability that makes a fractal with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, although we won't be using that ability too often, but the minus 8 lets us search our library for an instant or sorcery card that shares a color with this planeswalker, we get to exile it and then cast it without paying its mana cost. And we've got a lot of powerful instants and sorceries to potentially cast for free. And if we can sometimes ultimate two planeswalkers in quick succession, we can maybe get the combo of overflowing insight to draw seven cards and follow that up with a Seagate Restoration to draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hands plus one. We have no maximum hand size, so that's a nice way to draw around 20 cards in one fell swoop. Can also potentially take some extra turns using cards like Alrun's Epiphany. We've got Karn's Temporal Sundering, which can also bounce an opposing permanent and let us take an extra turn. And there's Time Warp, so plenty of ways to take extra turns in the deck. But first off, let's take a look at all the Planeswalkers that we're working with. At 3 mana, we've got Kiora, which is one of the better ones, as she starts out at 7 loyalty, so you can very quickly plus 2 get up to 9, and then use Kazmina's minus 8 ability on Kiora to find one of those instants or sorceries to cast for free, and otherwise Kiora can still help us ramp with the minus 1 on tapping a permanent. We've got Narset Part of Veils with a very powerful passive ability shutting down card draw from the opponent, and the minus 2 also a nice way to find more cards including Planeswalkers. Then we've got the Sky Dancer, which can potentially control the board with the first plus two ability, shrinking down a creature, making it lose flying. Can also generate bird tokens, and the minus eight can also give us an emblem that lets us draw cards whenever we tap an island, so that's also a fun one. We've got a Mirror Mage, which can be kicked, which will make it enter the battlefield with a copy, so that's a nice way to generate multiple Planeswalkers that we can all start plussing using Cosmina's plus two ability, so another quick way to reach ultimate. And Jace Cunning Castaway can also very quickly ultimate, since we can play Jace, use Cosmina's plus 2 ability if she's in play, to get Jace up to 5, at which point we can use the minus 5 on Jace, making 2 copies of Jace once again, and those we can also start plussing to potentially get to the ultimate. Then at 4 mana we've got Kazmina Enigmatic Mentor, which has a passive ability making the opponent pay 2 more mana for any removal that targets our creatures or planeswalkers, can also make wizard tokens, and then let us draw and discard. We've got Teferi, Master of Time, which is especially synergistic with Kazmina, as we can use the plus two ability from Kazmina in our turn, and then thanks to Teferi's passive ability, we can use the plus two from Kazmina in the opponent's turn again, so we can very quickly increase Teferi's loyalty to either use Kazmina's minus eight or Teferi's minus ten ability to take extra turns. We've got Taimyo Collector of Tales with a passive ability protecting us against the discard and sacrifice effects. Can also use the minus three to potentially get back powerful cards from our graveyard, including Time Warp and another Planeswalker that we want to try and ultimate. We've got Karn Sign of Urza providing extra cards with the plus and minus one abilities, or we can generate a construct token if we've got a few artifacts in play. Then at 5 mana we've got Anissa who shakes the world, she's being a little bit shy, but a very powerful planeswalker with a passive ability giving us access to more mana for each forest we have in play. We've got the Nissa Vital Force as well, which can also quickly ultimate with a minus 6, and if we use Kazmina's plus 2 ability we can potentially ultimate and still keep Nissa around, and then draw extra cards whenever we play a land. And then next up we've got Tesseret Artifice Master, which is another nice one to ultimate, as we'll be able to search our library for any permanent card to put on the battlefield each turn. Then we've got a Jace Unraveler of Secrets, can potentially draw cards with the plus one, or we can just use Cosmina's plus two ability to get to the ultimate, which will counter the first spell our opponents cast each turn. And then the minus two can also give us a bit of interaction bouncing a creature. And then we've got Arlen, Voice of the Pack, which is not a particularly powerful Planeswalker, but the fact that she starts out at 7 loyalty means we can also very quickly reach Cosmina's ultimate on Arlen. And then last but not least, Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. A bit of a boogeyman here, but a powerful sweeper with the minus X ability, and another Planeswalker we can very quickly ultimate. 
Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got a bit of ramp and a lot of interaction as well. So at zero mana, we've got Mox Amber, which makes mana if we control a Planeswalker. We've got Brainstorm to give us a bit of card selection, Abundant Harvest, another nice cantrip, and then both Grazer and Lenor Elves give us one mana acceleration. Then at two mana, we've got Blink of an Eye, as well as Into the Royal as cheap bounce spells to protect our Planeswalkers, can also be kicked to draw a card. Contentious Plan draws a card and proliferates, so that's a way to put additional loyalty counters on our Planeswalkers, so that also helps us with ultimating them. We've got a few counter spells with Disdainful Stroke, countering a spell with mana value 4 or greater, Negate to counter non-creature spells, Tails End to counter legendary spells, including potential opposing commanders, and the classic counter spell for double blue. Then we've got a few creatures that can help us protect our planeswalkers, and they'll also draw a card when they enter the battlefield, so we don't mind chum blocking with them. So we've got Fibblethip, also legendary for Mox Amber, as well as Elvish Visionary, and then Wall of Blossoms, an 04 blocker, can usually stick around for a while. Then we've got Kazmina's Transmutation, which is just flavorful in this deck, but also a great answer to problematic commanders from the opponent that might have powerful activated abilities that we can then shut down. And then we've got a bit of a ramp with cards like Explorer. We've got Into the North to find a land. And Gross Spiral lets us play an extra land. And then we've got a bunch of these ramp artifacts like Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, and Guardian Idol that all help us ramp. And uh, Mindstone should be at the bottom there too. And then we've got a few fog effects that can also prevent all combat damage to keep our planeswalkers alive. So we've got Haze of Pollen that can also be cycled and Root Snare for two mana. Then we've got more good blockers with the Carven Karyatid, which also draws a card when it enters battlefields. Cultivate for more ramp. Bala Get Recovery can get back a card from our graveyard. Then at four mana, Spark Double can copy one of our planeswalkers and can ignore the legendary rule, so we can have two of the same planeswalkers in play at the same time. Tesseret's Gambit, similar to Contentious Plan, can be cast for three mana and two life to draw two cards and then proliferate. So great for ultimating our planeswalkers. Whelming Wave is kind of a sweeper in blue, returning all creatures to their owner's hands except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. We've got Quandrix Cultivator as a nice creature that also ramps by finding a land and putting it in play. Biosense Hydra, very synergistic in this deck as well, enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each loyalty counter on planeswalkers we control, and whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on a planeswalker we control, put that many plus one plus one counters on Bioessence Hydra, and it also has Trample, so it can grow very large very quickly. And then Time Warp is excellent in a deck full of planeswalkers, as we'll be able to use even more loyalty abilities with the extra turn we take, getting incremental card advantage. And then taking a look at some of those powerful instants and sorceries we can get for free. We've got Temporal Sundering, which we've already covered. River's Rebuke, another sweeper returning all non-land permanence target player controls to their owner's hands. We've got Vorinclex, Monstrous Raider, not a sorcery, but just a powerful creature that's also very synergistic with our Planeswalkers, as they'll enter the battlefield with twice that much loyalty, so it can potentially ultimate them right away. We've got Alran's Epiphany to take an extra turn, make two bird tokens. Overflowing Insight to draw 7, Restoration to draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hand, plus 1. No maximum hand size for the rest of the game, also useful. And then Plain White Celebration, another excellent way to ultimate our Planeswalkers, as we can proliferate a few times. And then going over the mana base, nothing too special, we've got 42 lands total, so we always have extra lands to play out with our Arboreal, Gracer, Grow Spiral, and Explore. And then we've got 15 snow-covered islands, 10 snow-covered forests for Into the North, and then plenty of blue-green dual lands, and then one important utility land is Karn's Bastion, which can also help us proliferate to potentially ultimate our Planeswalkers a turn sooner. And then I notice we also have Heart of Kirin at 2 mana as a nice vehicle that can play defense and can potentially remove loyalty from our Planeswalkers to crew it, so we can play offense and defense with it. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Muldrotha. This is definitely a mulligan too slow. This is still not great. No early ramp. Yeah, on the draw this is probably not acceptable. Right, this one we can keep. And then I don't think we're gonna have many targets for negates. So we're looking at turn two Gross Peril, and then if we can play Kazmina into Jace, we can potentially ultimate cast away pretty quickly. 
Devour of Memory gonna make that a little bit more difficult. Alright, so... We have a few options. Don't mind Kiora and then pass. Yeah, we'll go with Kira here. Maybe lets me double spell next turn, transmutation, and the three mana planeswalker. Titan's Nest, okay. Good synergy with uh, milling themselves. Alrighty, so. Don't mind Cosmina. And then I need to untap to be able to play Transmutation. Plus two. And Island will keep. Titan's Nests and mills another card, so they could play Moldrotha already. Although, River's Rebuke, not a bad answer here. We'll set the opponent back quite a bit. And Devourer hits Cosmina for one. And there's Moldrotha. Alrighty, so can play Rebuke using Cura to untap. This will buy us a lot of time. And we're looking for lands. Harbor is perfect. So next turn I could cast Plain White Celebration using Cura to untap a land to potentially ultimate Cosmina. Hmm. Disciple is going to force us to sacrifice a Planeswalker. So, at that point, I guess we just sacrifice Kiora. And then we can play Jace. Scry here. And Spark Doubles, tempting, although an extra land would probably be better, as we'll be able to play Celebration. Narsets, also tempting, but once again looking for land instead. So next turn we can ultimate cast away, making two more copies, which will be annoying to deal with. And opponent replays the Devourer plus Titan's Nest. Okay. Did not find the land we were looking for. So, yeah, I can ultimate Castaway. Kazmina's gonna plus. Fibblethip, fine to keep on top. Play this with Kicker. And then this one we can use a zero ability. This we will plus two to scry. Don't need Cosmina, looking for land. Can plus two. Elves, not quite. And then I could make a Fractal to block. Do 
Devourer is unblockable, so it wouldn't be able to prevent an attack on Cosmina. But a land lets us cast Celebration, which would still be good. And yeah, we've got a lot of Planeswalkers in play. They may not be very powerful individually, but they do start adding up. So four cards in Graveyards to leverage Muldrotha and Titan's Nest. Opponent's going to finish off one Jace. So maybe has another answer for Cosmina here. Did not find a land, so maybe keeping Fibbleth up on top was not a right play. Although we can still use the Mirror Mage to find a land for the turn. So we'll plus... And get a plus here too, or I can use the minus five and then plus with a copy. Like all right, come on, like land. We've scribed quite a bit now. All right, there we go. I am really in the use the zero ability. Play this. Cast celebration. And we can proliferate four times. Ultimates, get a time walk. Temporal Sundering's probably the best one. Cast that for free. We take an extra turn, bounce Muldrotha. Every action has led to this moment. And yeah, we're about to take a few extra turns here with all these planeswalkers at more than eight loyalty. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Facing off against the Gishoth, so a dinosaur kind of ramp deck. Hopefully we don't see too many early dinosaurs to pressure our planeswalkers. We would much rather face a deck that's kind of slow to get started. And drove the Mighty is not what we wanted to see. Still gonna play Cosmina. And plus. In a better future. And then... There's a good chance we get to play a big Hydra next turn. Sky Terror means they can hit Cosmina for three. Ooh, Vorinclex, that's a good one too. So I can plus two. Don't need Cold Steel Heart anymore. Play a big Hydra. Can hold off the Drover of the Mighty. Sky Tower can still chip in for two. But we can do some damage here with Vorinclex. Bonus gonna ramp with Roots. So next turn we could already see Gishoth make an appearance. So we get to keep Cosmina around. These tricks before. Play of Orinclex. Plus two. Which turns into a plus four, which adds even more counters on the Hydra. Vital Force I can keep. And then... Probably get in with a Hydra. Keep Vorinclex back. Or we can keep a blocker for Gishoth. And just attack with Vorinclex. Interesting spot as we can potentially just kill the opponent with damage. But I kind of want to try and ultimate one of our planeswalkers instead. Opponent's going to keep on ramping with Great Henge. And say Migration. Okay, so should be able to combo off here. So I can plus two. And a ton of loyalty to Hydra. River's Rebuke, also excellence. I can take an extra turn. 
And just attacking for damage is enough. Although... We've got an embarrassment of riches here. Rebuke could bounce the opponent's stuff. We could ultimate Kazmina. Spark double. Yeah, you can kind of see how this deck can start going off. Alright, so we get to see two of our creatures in action. We don't have many of them in the deck, but they certainly carry their weight onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against a Kalia deck. Yeah, this ends fine. Opponent with a Field of the Dead. Okay, so they will eventually make some zombies. And I think I'm happy finding a land here with the Harvest Finds Expanse. So our opponent off to a relatively slow start. We get to play Kazmina. I want to fetch before scrying. Could have gotten a forest, I suppose, for Nyssa. But also need quite a bit of blue mana. Alright, so... Is it time for Nyssa? Looks like it. Brainstorm. Good combo with Narset. So I can play Nyssa. Animate my forests. So I can still foretell Epiphany. Heartless Egg does take care of it. Rapacious Dragon makes double treasure. Okay. So what's the play here? I can cast Rebuke. Bounce the opponent's stuff. And then try to ultimate some Planeswalkers next turn. Don't mind that idea. Although, could also keep up Haze of Pollen which will accomplish the same. So... Yeah, I think we start with a Brainstorm. Okay. And then put back... Probably Rebuke. And... Do I need Bastion? Maybe I do. Put back Island. And then we can play Narsets. I'll use the minus two to find Rebuke. Ugin's good too, but let's take the Rebuke. And then I can uh, still keep up Haze of Pollen, and then I can plus two Nissa instead of plus one. Snarl can go to the bottom. And Forest will keep... Alright, so we've got Haze of Pollen to prevent combat damage and two Planeswalkers ready to minus eight with Cosmina. Plus Bastion to maybe keep them around. Psalm for Ramp is fine. Pun makes their first zombie. And a Mask with Nexus. Fair enough. Keep our Narset around. And then step one is activate Bastion. Proliferate. So I can ultimate. And then Nissa's green, so I wouldn't be able to get a time walk effect. But I can get the plain white celebration to proliferate a bunch. And 
and then I can ultimate Kazmina. Probably want to get a time warp effect. So how about temporal sundering? We'll take an extra turn, bounce mask with Nexus. And your opponent has seen enough. Next turn we could ultimate Narset. And we have plenty of tools at our disposal. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, assuming Brainstorm can find some two mana ramp. Up against the Naban, Dino Viteration. So we'll fire off a turn one Brainstorm. Alright, there's an Into the North, perfect. Do I want to keep Heart of Kiran, Haze of Fallen? It's probably one of those two that we get rid of. I'm thinking keep the hearts, get rid of Haze by shuffling with Into the North. And then Heart can help us play defense. Opponent does not tap out for Naban, so they might have a counter spell up. In which case, I don't want to tap out for Kazmina just yet. See if this Mind Stone resolves. It gets negated. And then we can still play Heart of Kiron. Okay, and then hopefully next turn we can play Kazmina. Opponent passes instead. Yeah, this Kazmina's not resolving, is it? Second so Desert's Gambit instead. Try and hit my land drop for the turn. And we'll just pay full price, even though this might run into a sensor. It's gonna be a Wizard's Retort. That's fine. Naban joins the fun, and we can finally play Cosmina. That resolves. And don't need Explorer, would rather just draw land naturally. Heart of Kiran can help us play defense if needed. A Master of Winds. Triggers twice with Naban, so it's gonna draw four, discard two, pretty strong. Naban goes for Cosmina, so they might have a bounce spell. Do you fight the or they didn't read Heart of Kiran properly. Tails ends could be useful. Plus, find a visionary. Probably don't need that. So if I spark double, I wouldn't be able to keep up tails end, but I think I want to get an extra planeswalker going. And Bastion's fine. Okay, so we can potentially trade off Heart of Kiron for Master of Winds. I can advance this tree. Naming Wizard, presumably. So Heart of Kiron's still good enough to hold off the Master. And no attacks. So they might be keeping up a counter spell. Well, I would love to resolve a Karn's Temporal Sundering. Although I don't know if that's happening here. Can always use Sebastian as a mana sink, so we don't waste our mana at the very least, so I guess we'll be content just plusing Cosmina. Sky Dancer seems okay. Can also keep up Tails End alongside it. And we'll pass. 
opponent could use Icon of Ancestry, but that's fine by me. They don't, so they were keeping up interaction. Master attacks. So this is the Spark Doubled Cosmina. I guess we use this Cosmina to crew. I'll see you after class. And then we might see a bounce ball on the heart. Alright, that works. Cyclone Summoner. Return all permanents. Well, I can counter the trigger with Tails Ends. I suppose. So that still works. And then I guess we don't have enough mana to also proliferate, but that's fine. And now we get to resolve Karn's Temporal Sundering and be off to the races, as we'll be able to ultimate two of our Kazminas. Keep a land. I'll take an extra turn and bounce. When do we bounce? The Master of Winds, maybe. Take an extra turn, not gonna crew the heart. Then we can ultimate this Cosmina. And probably get Alrun's Epiphany. And our opponent packs it in. We were gonna be able to potentially plus Cosmina. Play more Planeswalkers, maybe proliferate with Karn's Bastion, and there's a ton of options for which finishers to search up. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Up against a Nissa Black Green Landfall deck. Tamiya can maybe protect against future discard effects as well. And then for now, I guess Grow Spiral over Signets. Maybe draw into something relevant we can cast. Alright. So, kind of like Signets into Kazmina. Start plussing. And a Vital Force seems fine, so no shortage of Planeswalkers. Nissa gonna pressure Kazmina. So what's next for us? Could play Nissa who shakes the worlds. And then keep our breeding pool untapped. I will protect the virtue of this world. Second play Tamio. And just start plussing a bunch. Haze of Pollen. Doesn't seem bad, actually. Especially if the opponent turns out a few creatures next turn. So they can finish off Cosmina here. But then we can take over with our Author of Planeswalkers. Could also let Cosmina go to the graveyard to get back with Taimyo. If we don't want to pay the commander tax. They could make us shuffle our library by using Ghost Quarter. All right, never kills Nissa, and then they can still finish off Cosmina here. So yeah, there was a one-two punch. 
instead puts Cavalier of Thorns in play. Alright, so we get to keep Kasmina around at least. So that's good. And uh, Haze of Pollen will make it so we can ultimate next turn. So we'll plus a bunch. Not really looking for anything too specific. You like the gauntlet? <laughs> the fairy, I guess, is fine. And Nissa, we can plus two. I wonder what the weather's like on Ixalan. All right, and then hopefully Haze of Pollen means we can start ultimating next turn. Something like a questing beast could be bad since it counters the haze. So I could shuffle here to get a land. Uh, we lose the fairy. Not super attached to the fairy. I think I would rather have the land. So we'll get a forest. And we'll wait to cast Haze until it's relevance. Bun moves to combats. Tries to kill Nissa. Recovery gets back never. Which I guess they can cast here by tapping a land. Alright, so that kills the Tamyo. One goes for Nissa instead, since they don't want me making an emblem. But now we can use Kazmina's ultimate on Tamyo, which is probably better. Anything else I can do instead? And then what instant or sorcery do we get with Tamyo is a question. A time walk effect isn't bad. I don't get to use my mana this turn. So there might be a better option. So Alrun's Epiphany comes to mind. Could go for Plain White Celebration. And that can also get back a permanence. Yeah, kind of like that. Plain White Celebration. And then I want to return permanence. And then proliferate at least three times. So we can ultimate again and get back. Probably Vital Force, actually. Play Vital Force. And then I can ultimate Kazmina. And now maybe get a Time Warp effect. So we'll go with Epiphany. Temporal Sundering also would have been reasonable, but I get to plus. And then not enough mana to replay Kazmina, so we'll just play this tapped, finish off Nissa. Ooh, top deck to Temporal Sundering. All right, that should be lights out. So cast this, take an extra turn, bounce Cavalier. And our opponent sees a writing on the wall and packs it in. Sweet. Another option, I guess, would have been to get Time Warp instead of Epiphany, since that we can also get back with Time Use Minus ability. So there were probably better plays available. So we got to see our Kazmina Brawl deck in action. Definitely a very combo-focused deck. That's pretty weak if the opponent is off to an aggressive start, since you can't really deal with early creatures killing all your planeswalkers. You need to be able to get a foothold in the game. So being on the play is important, a bit of early ramp is nice. And some of our more powerful planeswalkers, like Nissa, of course, doing a lot of heavy lifting as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.